Hey what's up guys, in this video we're going to be having a look at some of the new gaming features across Mac, iOS, and iPadOS, and Apple TV. I made a separate video about the new games that were announced for Mac, so you can check that out. This video is specifically about like the software and so forth. So I wanted to quickly go over the new games app uh, that uh, Apple have introduced across um, Mac and iPhone and iPad. For some reason, it's not on Apple TV. Not sure why. But uh, yeah, so this app is... Uh, it's weird. I don't know why it's here. I don't think it's necessary because I don't really know how it differs from the App Store Play section. Basically, it's just a separate app where you can check out uh, games on the App Store and you can have a look at... Uh, different categories for, I don't know, action games or different Apple Arcade games or the um, the best free games to download. Um, also, the paid games, these are okay, they're better than the free games. And also, we have the Apple Arcade page, which uh, gives you a uh, maybe a better rundown of what's on offer compared to the App Store Apple Arcade page. And um, we've also got, again, different categories for action and RPG and, and so forth. And then we have the Play Together tab. Now, this one is, um, it could be a lot better. Basically, you can just uh, see different friends that you've got and you can play different challenges together. You can challenge them in different challenges you can't actually like invite them to games here i don't believe and also i think the way that you add friends right now is really bad it's been this way forever you basically send them an iMessage invite which i personally believe is a pretty bad thing in terms of privacy like i don't want to give out someone my personal email or phone number um, so I hope that can get better in just this whole section. And then we have the library, which shows you all of your App Store games. And also you can filter it by controller support, which is actually really good. Um, that's actually really, really good. And you can sort it by Apple Arcade games and installed games. Now, installed games is weird because it didn't work on my Mac. It didn't show any of the installed games, even though I had a few installed. Um, and also, I did notice that um, Subnautica was shown, and this was from the Epic Games Store. Um, but when I clicked it, the, the game wouldn't launch. I think that's because of the OS is um, having issues with the game. But I don't know if this means that you can link um, games out outside of the app store i couldn't do it for anything else on steam or so forth it was only for this one specific game on iphone this section will show you your installed apps on your device however it, for me it didn't list all of them it only listed a few um i don't again i don't know if it's completely necessary and i think it can be a lot better um, adding friends is not good i would also like to see a section on the homepage for seeing upcoming games because that's not here right now because I think it'd be really good to stay up to date with games that are coming to iPhone and iPad and Mac especially on Mac because we never know really what's coming also on iPhone and iPad you have the new games section which is really good it shows you some of the latest games that you can play but this is missing from Mac disappointing because it would be good to see some of the newest games that uh, you can play. Next, Apple have added a game overlay, which you can enable using a controller. Now you can do this on both Mac and iPhone and iPad. It basically brings up, uh, you can check out your achievements, you can check out different friends, you can see what controller you're using and you can enable or disable game mode. You can also adjust the display brightness and sound and so forth. I found this was actually a bit buggy and sometimes certain menu interactions didn't work. So I imagine that will be fixed though. One of the biggest new updates from WWDC 
25 is the updated metal HUD. I'm going to be taking a look at the Mac version first. It has a brand new design and you can customize different features on the HUD. For example, you could press F12 on your keyboard and it will bring up a configuration panel. Or you can go up to the top window and configure the HUD from there. Basically, you can enable different things like what device you're playing on, the refresh rate, the frame rate, FPS graph, GPU time, resolution, scaling, memory, thermal state, which is actually really, really huge. You can also change the position of the HUD, the size, and the opacity. What's also cool is that you can now see if you're using metal effects, temporal or spatial upscaling and what the scaling input and resolution are. The Metal HUD has also been updated significantly on iPhone and iPad. Sadly, you can't enable the HUD for individual apps with on a iPhone or iPad device. You still have to use Terminal on Mac, but just like on Mac, you can adjust HUD features within the Settings app. One thing that's missing from the iPhone and iPad version of the Metal HUD is Metal FX scaling. It does not show, which is very disappointing right now. I'm hoping this is a bug and, and it can be added in the future because it's a really, really important uh, feature that would be uh, really good to have as a consumer and a developer. The updated Metal HUD provides us so much more information about what's going on under the hood for games on Mac and iPhone and iPad. Really, really powerful. And one of the best tools that personally I think Apple have ever put out. This new Metal HUD has also been brought over to Apple TV. However, I found that you cannot customize the HUD settings within tvOS which is a little bit disappointing, but I don't imagine like anyone out there is probably going to enable the HUD on their Apple TV. This is not really uh, the most popular gaming device out there, but it's still, I think it's really cool that this is possible. Getting this set up on Apple TV is a bit harder than iPhone and iPad as you have to pair it with Xcode and then use the terminal commands, but it's really cool. I also wanted to quickly go over Game Porting Toolkit 3 with Cyberpunk 2077. As we all know, this will be getting a native port later in the year. So we're going to see what it's like under Crossover and Game Porting Toolkit 3. Now, keep in mind, this is Crossover's graphics libraries updated to Game Porting Toolkit 3 version. And I'm using DLSS, which is enabled. I followed a guide from another YouTube channel. You can look at this in the description if you want to enable Game Porting Toolkit 3 on your Mac. Anyway, this is 1080p medium with DLSS on transformer model and balanced resolution. We can see with frame gen enabled and disabled, we are getting about plus 30 FPS. Apple did briefly showcase the Metal 4 port of Cyberpunk 2077 running on an M4 MacBook Air. And this is CD Projekt Red using Metal Effects frame interpolation to increase performance to 60 FPS on a MacBook Air. I think this might be a little bit misleading to uh, say that the MacBook Air can achieve 60 FPS because I think over time it's probably gonna throttle and go below 60 FPS, but this is still a really good results, especially for, you know, like a Mac mini or, uh, MacBook Pro. Uh, WWDC so far for gaming has been um, underwhelming in terms of like the new games announced, but some of this technology is actually really exciting, especially with Metal 4 and all the advancements there. I can't really show anything yet because we don't have anything to test with Metal 4, but you know, Game Porting Toolkit 3 is really cool. The new Metal HUD is freaking outstanding. And the, the the games app and the the game overlay is you know the they're trying <laughs> um i mean i welcome it but it could be better um but that's basically it okay see you, bye